Welcome back. The Robert Mueller probe, the Russia probe, is showing signs of winding down, but critics are accusing House Intel Committee Chairman Adam Schiff of unleashing a conspiracy theory with his recent claim after Senate Intelligence Committee Chairman Richard Burr said his panel found no evidence of collusion. So now we've heard from the Senate, the House, the DOJ, and now the FBI. And look at these headlines. The Wall Street Journal publishing this op-ed, shifting to phase two of collusion. Conspiracy theorists looking for something new, anticipating a Mueller letdown. Another piece published by the Washington Examiner this weekend. Adam Schiff has conclusion pro uh, collusion problems rather of his own that after he met with Glenn Simpson in Aspen, uh, a couple of months ago, our next guest disagrees with Schiff's recent statement that evidence of collusion is in, quote, plain sight. And joining me right now is former South Carolina Congressman, former chairman of the House Oversight Committee. Trey Gowdy is with me right now. He's also a Fox News contributor and a former federal prosecutor. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, ma'am. Thank well, you. Well, what was it a year and a half ago when Adam Schiff came out and went on the Sunday morning programs and said, I have more than circumstantial evidence that there was collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. How is it possible that he has not corrected himself at this point since we've heard from the Senate, the House, the DOJ, and now through Andrew McCabe's own words, the FBI, that we have yet to see any collusion? Well, he never goes on shows where he's actually going to be pressed on it. I mean, what a, what a brilliant strategy Adam has. I'm going to make this bombastic statement completely unsupported by the facts, but I'm never going to go on any show where I'm asked about it. Maria, the House Intelligence Committee, no evidence of conspiracy between the Trump campaign and Russia. The Senate Intelligence Committee, and remember, the media love the Senate investigation. They didn't care too much about Devin Nunes in the House, but they love Richard Burr in the Senate investigation. No evidence of conspiracy between the Trump campaign and Russia. Mueller's indictments, no indictments showing conspiracy between the Trump campaign and Russia. There's never been a witness who's alleged conspiracy between the Trump campaign and Russia. And yet Adam Schiff, that, that, that three-eyed raven, Adam Schiff, who can see things nobody else can see, says he has evidence more than circumstantial, not quite direct. By the way, for those who didn't go to law school, there's no such thing. There's no such thing as evidence that is not circumstantial or direct. But Adam has seen it, and he's never pressed on it. Yeah, it's pretty incredible, actually, because, you know, this, this issue is still out there. We're waiting for Robert Mueller to wrap up his report with some conclusions here. But at this point, we are hearing from people like Andrew McCabe, who is now on a book tour, as you know, uh, talking about things like the 25th Amendment, how this effort was underway to remove the president, and how he was so sure that he needed that uh, investigation in place uh, to make sure to find the collusion. What do you make of, of Andrew McCabe out the way he is talking about what he's been talking about, even though he's been referred for criminal charges by the inspector general? Well, let's go back to May the 9th, I believe it was, Comey is fired, and Andy McCabe wants you to believe that the Department of Justice and the FBI were just in utter chaos, and they thought the President of the United States might be an agent of Russia, and they thought the President of the United States may be guilty of criminal obstruction of justice. This is May the 9th of 2017. Two days later, Andy McCabe is before the Senate Intelligence Committee with the entire world watching. It's on worldwide television. And he's got the Senate Intelligence Committee, and he doesn't say one single solitary word about Donald Trump being an agent of Russia or uh, criminally obstructing justice. And if that's not good enough, if two days wasn't enough time for Andy to process that, in June of 2017, he's right back before the Senate Intelligence Committee. If you really believed, Andy, that Donald Trump was an agent of Russia, why did you tell CBS and not Congress? If you really, Andy, believe that Donald Trump criminally obstructed justice, why did you tell CBS, but you didn't tell the United States Congress a month after you discovered it? Yeah, I mean, this is really stunning because he was in Washington testifying back-to-back -back days, and he didn't say anything about that then. He also didn't discuss what we learned in the CBS interview, that they were actually three investigations into Donald Trump or his campaign or his presidency. Isn't that right? Yeah, there were four opportunities that Andy McCabe had to tell either the House or the Senate what he told CBS. Four separate independent 
opportunities to do so. And, and the reason I say three investigations, you had the July 2016 investigation that was initiated and signed off on by Peter Strzok. That was into the Trump campaign. And then when Comey is fired, Andy McCabe proudly told CBS that he launched his own counterintelligence investigation into whether or not Donald Trump was, a, was an agent of Russia. And then, for good measure, he launched a criminal investigation into obstruction of justice. So I'm not great with math, but that's three separate investigations into a duly elected president, near as I can tell, simply because he fired Jim Comey. Right, or he, they didn't like him. I mean, you know, obviously we, we know they didn't like him based on all those biased texts between Peter Strzok and, and Lisa Page, but, I mean, you're a federal, former federal <laughs> prosecutor. Don't you need a predicate, a real evidence-based reason to launch a criminal investigation into a duly elected sitting president? Uh, you need an evidentiary basis to launch an investigation into anyone, anyone whether right? it's the president <laughs> of the United States or not. Uh, and that's also true with counterintelligence investigations. I mean, look, the American people give these awesome powers to our law enforcement agencies. And, and, and those powers are to keep us safe from foreign adversaries and domestic adversaries. We give them awesome powers. Yeah. And what they do not expect is for Andy McCabe or Peter Strzok or Lisa Page to have these historic levels of bias and launch counterintelligence and criminal investigations simply because you wish someone had not been elected president. Right, exactly. All right, for, uh, Congressman, I want to talk about accountability with you. I want to get your take on what we might learn from Robert Mueller and also have you react to something one of your former colleagues said on this program last week, and that was John Ratcliffe. As a conspiracy starts to unravel, sometimes the co-conspirators turn on one another and you get inconsistent testimony. Uh, Bruce Orr's testimony is inconsistent with his boss, Sally Yates. Uh, Annie McCabe's testimony is inconsistent with his boss, Jim Comey. Jim Comey's testimony is inconsistent with his lawyer, Jim Baker. McCabe's testimony is also inconsistent with Rod Rosenstein. So you have all of these things that were taking place, and again, it underscores the point that there were uh, senior officials at the Department of Justice that were uh, the same officials that had undermined uh, and prejudged uh, Hillary Clinton uh, as innocent, prejudged Donald Trump as guilty, uh, and they were the ones making the decisions in these investigations. And that was, uh, that was Congressman uh, John Ratcliffe with me here last week. Uh, he, of course, a member of the Intel as well as Judiciary Committees. I am back with former South Carolina Congressman and former Chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Trey Gowdy. He's also a Fox News contributor and a former federal prosecutor. And, and Congressman, your thoughts on what you just heard from your former colleague, John Ratcliffe. Are we going to see any accountability here? You've got Bill Barr. Is he going to be seeking the truth on this? Robert Mueller about to come up with his report. What's your reaction to actually seeing accountability? accountability on all of this. Well, Maria, let me say this. One of the great privileges of my eight years in Congress was working alongside John Ratcliffe, who's a brilliant lawyer and an even better person. And what you just heard from Johnny is evidence of a serious investigation, not these five minute congressional, but every one of the people that Johnny just referenced was deposed by a committee of Congress with no time limits on the ability to ask questions. So is there going to be accountability? It depends upon whether tribunals are willing to do what Johnny just did, which is spend hours interviewing the Jim mm. Bakers and the Jim Comeys. Remember, we had Comey for two whole days. I just listened to Lindsey Graham. He sounds really, really serious about providing oversight. Bill Barr, when he was being confirmed, said he was serious about it. Michael Horowitz, the inspector general, is a serious man and a straight arrow. Yeah. This is not a Republican or Democrat issue, Maria. Everyone should have a Department of, of Justice that they have confidence. And in fact, we won't make it as a republic if you don't have confidence. So fair oversight, no artificial time limits, and do it with, with serious people like John Rackley. We'll see about that. Trey Gowdy, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And we will see you soon.